Welcome. I'm covering now pathology of deficiency anemias, deficiency anemias, mainly iron deficiency, macroblastic, and briefly anemia of chronic disorders. So if we know the uh, classification of anemia, the decreased production, the top six anemias, the two deficiency anemias, two deficiency of blast cell anemias, and two hemolytic anemias. Out of this, I am covering the two major, the iron and megaloblastic, and then anemia of chronic disorder and aplastic anemia briefly. Okay. So, just to recapitulate, the RBCs are produced through maturation of erythroblasts, gradually losing the nucleus and dividing multiple times, finally giving rise to RBC. For this, the two important nutrients for the DNA is B12 and folate. Both of them are important for DNA metabolism, production of DNA. And you have to read the metabolism of both B12 and folate, the R binders, stomach, intrinsic factor, colon, so all the physiology. Okay, And that results in DNA synthesis and cell division deficiency of that causes megaloblastic anemia okay and the more common clinically the iron deficiency anemia which is necessary for the hemoglobin production in the cytoplasm so dna for the nucleus hemoglobin for the cytoplasm so for the hemoglobin read the iron metabolism and the second group third group second group is um deficiency of blast cells themselves either the blast cells are there or blast cells are destroyed um, even if they are there they are not dividing that is a plastic anemias dysplastic anemias leukemias we will cover later so now only understand the a plastic anemias so the deficiency of nutrients the two and the deficiency of the blast cells okay and that also covers anemia of chronic disorders. What we are not going to cover is hemolytic anemias. Okay, that we will cover later. So, to better understand, I am covering together both iron deficiency and megaloblastic anemia. The commonest cause of iron deficiency is bleeding. Loss of iron is the from the body is the biggest loss for iron stores because very limited absorption so when you read iron metabolism you will understand that iron has no good mechanism to absorb as well as excrete so the major source of iron for routine use is recycling of the rbc so bleeding is a big problem for the nutrition that is iron and commonest cause of iron deficiency is bleeding loss of blood Occasionally, it can be due to nutrition, increased needs during physiological growth, childhood, pregnancy. But in most of these cas uh, cases also, you should exclude bleeding. So, bleeding is the commonest. Pathogenesis, decreased iron, decreased hemoglobin, and excess cell division because there is normal DNA leading to small RBCs. Morphology, microcytic, that is small RBC, RBC with less hemoglobin, hypochromic. And due to unknown reasons, the elongated RBCs are a result of iron deficiency known as pencil cells. Clinically, the iron is also necessary for fast dividing cells such as epithelium and there is damage in the epithelial tissues glossitis, chelitis, stomatitis. Coilonychia is a little more characteristic seen in typically in only iron deficiency, not in megaloblastic, whereas all other features are seen in megaloblastic as well. Dysphagia is usually due to epithelial disintegrity in the esophagus. In fact, it can cause even esophageal strictures. plummer winson syndrome. Now, megaloblastic major cause is nutrition that is decreased by b12 or folate in the food are antibodies 
or damage to the absorption apparatus, the gastrointestinal disorders, gastritis, intestinal disorders, surgery, blind lobe syndromes, ga chronic gastroenteritis, inflammatory bowel disease, malabsorption syndrome, and in addition, cancer therapy. Cancer itself, when it is fastly growing, high grade cancers, utilize all the available B12 and folate. And patients may suffer from deficiency. But most important is many of the anti cancer drugs are also inhibitors of folate because folate is necessary for cell division. What is the pathogenesis? So, both vitamin B12 and folate are necessary for DNA. So, please read the normal metabolism. So, there is decreased DNA and that leads to decreased cell division. So, that decrease results in fewer number of larger cells. And because it affects all the cell lines in the bone marrow, typically in a megaloblastic anemia, there will be both anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. Whereas in iron deficiency, only anemia. Okay, because here it is DNA which is affected. Morphology, because these cells are not dividing well, so they remain big, which are immature cells. So, there is a macrocytic normochromic anemia with pancytopenia, decreased all other cells. Okay. So, clinical features, because the rapidly dividing cells also involve epithelium, they also have glossitis, chelitis, stomatitis, that is inflammation of the tongue, inflammation of the oral cavity and anemia. In addition to anemia, Megaloblastic anemia has a jaundice and bruising because of decreased platelets, so bleeding tendencies and because RBCs are broken down, the large RBCs are broken down, so there is an element of hemolysis. Now, we will look at a laboratory result of a megaloblastic anemia, sorry, microcytic anemia, iron deficiency. So, in an iron deficiency, the MCV will be markedly low. So, very small RBCs. In the peripheral blood picture, that is the small lymphocyte. Compared to the small lymphocyte, all RBCs should be of the same size of a small lymphocyte, normal. Whereas here you can see most of them are small size. And many of the RBCs are these pencil cells, that is elongated, empty appearing cells. So, these are pencil cells. Now, these are platelets, one, two and three platelets here. Okay, so what are the features on microscopy? Microcytic, hypochromic RBCs, anisopoikilocytosis means some are small, some are very small, some are big. So there is variation in size and variation in shape. So aniso variation in size, poikilo variation in shape. So irregular, abnormal RBCs and predominantly microcytic and hypochromic. Okay. So, RBC count will be slightly decreased for the hemoglobin. So, for the hemoglobin, here it is American values. So, remove the point, hemoglobin is 97 grams here. And RBC count approximately 4.28, normal is 5.5. Okay. So, there is microcytic hypochromic RBC and all the results will be low except RDW. RDW is only means anisopoikilocytosis. Okay. So, the how the um, microscopic appearance blood film, most of the RBCs will be small and that is a line diagram of lymphocyte. So, compared to the lymphocyte, very few RBCs are normal, most of the RBCs are small. Okay, and the central pallor is more than the one third the diameter. The central pallor is more. Okay, here central pallor is normal. This is normal. Whereas here it is central pallor more. So most of the cells have microcytic, hypochromic with pencil cells. Okay, and isophycytosis.
Now, coming to macrocytic anemias. Now, again, macrocytic anemias, you get hemoglobin low, but markedly decreased RBC count, very little. If you remember the previous microcytic anemia, RBC count was 4 million. Okay, whereas hemoglobin, there it was 9, here it is 10, almost the same. RBC count is markedly low. And MCV is high compared to the normal, MCV is high, and that high MCV indicates most of the RBCs are large. And also interesting to find out in pure megaloblastic is MCH high, that is per, per RBC hemoglobin is high, but the hemoglobin concentration is the same. So percentage of space occupied by hemoglobin is same, but the total hemoglobin per RBC is high. So MCHC normal, MCH high. Simply understand that normal RBC and a big RBC, a big bag with more hemoglobin. And also one additional feature in megaloblastic anemia is megaloblasts. That is the erythroblasts which are pale cytoplasm big nucleus become dark cytoplasm with very rough nucleus. And because this nucleus, a DNA is abnormal missing thymidine okay and in general most of the cells are bigger in a normal in a megaloblastic marrow and that's why the name megaloblastic large blast cells due to defective dna synthesis okay megaloblastic marrow and that results in big big rbcs so compared to the size of the lymphocyte rbc size is much big and because Hemoglobin is otherwise normal, the RBCs are normochromic. So, normochromic, big sized RBC. And usually they are oval, oval macrocytes. Okay. And also, WBCs are also big. And with hypersegmentation, normal neutrophils will have usually three to four lobes. Here it is markedly hypersegmented. Okay. So, these are all the features of megaloblastic anemia. Also, in general, you will see less number of RBCs, less platelets and less WBCs. So, pan-cytopenia. Okay. So, macrocytic, hypersegmented neutrophils and pan-cytopenia. Now, briefly, pernicious anemia. Now, pernicious anemia is a vitamin B12 deficiency anemia due to autoimmune atrophic gastritis. So, there are many causes of vitamin B12 deficiency, but they are not pernicious anemias. So, pernicious anemia is a specific disorder of autoimmune gastritis. Antibodies against the intrinsic factor and parietal cell antibodies. There are type 1, type 2, type 3 antibodies, which block the vitamin B12 absorption, giving rise to decreased tetrahydrofolate that is folic acid. So, remember both vitamin B12 and folate deficiency ultimately leads to reduce the tetrahydrofolate and that results in decreased DNA synthesis. So, there is interactivity of both vitamin B12 and folate in megaloblastic anemia and that is the reason patients are usually treated with both vitamin B12 and folate. Otherwise, just treating any one of them exaggerates the deficiency of the other. So, it is important to note in while in the treatment of the patients. Okay. And that is because of the interrelativity or the interaction between vitamin B12 and folate together in synthesis of DNA. Now, other causes of uh, vitamin B12 deficiency like gastrectomy, achlorohydria means decreased acid in the stomach, chronic pancreatitis, ileal resection, malabsorption syndrome, tapeworm infestation, malignancy, pregnancy, hyperthyroidism, all these give rise to vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, but they are not pernicious anemia. Okay, pernicious anemia is only secondary to autoimmune gastritis. Clinically, megaloblastic anemia in general, the same features, severe anemia, glossitis, stomatitis, 
angular chelitis with the neurological defects is typical of vitamin B12 because vitamin B12 is also necessary for myelin synthesis in the nerves. So, in severe vitamin B12 deficiency, the nerves become demyelinated and they produce dysfunction, neural, neuronal loss. Specifically, in the posterior columns of the spinal cord, the dorsal tracts, because they are all sensory tracts and the characteristic um, clinical signs uh, read about. Okay, they will, the patients will have loss of proprioception and these neurological defects are usually not seen in a pure folate deficiency. Whereas in vitamin B12, you will see this neuronal symptoms. So, read about intrinsic factor and ileum, the two important for vitamin B12. Now, an interesting finding is that both vitamin B12 and folate are important in DNA synthesis and the nature has put them in two different dietary compartments. Vitamin B12 is only seen in animals, that too particularly microorganisms. Whereas folates are seen only in the green vegetables and that gets destroyed by cooking. So it is, I'm stressing the importance of balanced diet. Okay. Now, why microcytic anemia that is iron deficiency will have small RBCs and why megaloblastic anemia has big cells? A lot of students had asked, so I have created this uh, diagram, a erythroblast in the marrow through continuous cell division and gradual decrease in size becomes mature RBC, so normal hemopoiesis. In case of iron deficiency, because the nucleus is normal but hemoglobin is delayed, so the cytoplasmic maturation is delayed, the cell continues to divide resulting in small microcytic RBCs, a little more number than in megaloblastic anemia. So, microcytic hypochromic. Whereas, in case of megaloblastic anemia, because the DNA is abnormal, the DNA does not allow cell division. So, the cells do not divide much, resulting in very large RBCs. And these large RBCs break down in the marrow itself, so producing immature RBCs and very few RBCs, big, very few RBCs, okay. And in case of megaloblastic anemia, because it is DNA, it affects even WBCs, that is hypersegmented neutrophils and image, uh, decreased platelets as well, so all the cell lines. So to summarize, normal blood film would look like this, a bigger RBCs with immature RBCs is megaloblastic anemia and compared to the small lymphocyte, small RBCs with pencil forms is iron deficiency anemia. Okay, understood? Now, briefly anemia of chronic disease that is anemia seen in patients suffering from many other chronic disorders any disorders um, as you know it produces inflammation and inflammation produces inflammatory mediators interferons tumor necrosis factor interleukins and these inflammatory mediators block iron transfer in the bone marrow from that macrophage to the RBC okay and it also enhances RBC phagocytosis by the macrophages also inhibits erythroid erythropoietin production now all these together suppress the production of RBCs one and block the iron transfer so it is a functional iron deficiency but this cases are usually mild, the chemical mediators does not affect all RBCs. So, patients will have a mild microcytic hypochromic. So, if they consider that as the lymphocyte, mildly small and mildly hypochromic RBCs and that is the morphology. Okay, And clinically, 
they produce mild anemia which does not respond to iron therapy simply because there is enough iron there and we, how do we confirm do a iron studies serum ferritin will be high in these patients unlike iron deficiency where serum ferritin will be low okay now finally brief about aplastic anemia a aplastic anemia is due to bone marrow failure so that's the normal bone marrow i am showing 50% cells 50% fat when the blast cells do not divide they are just resting lazy or inhibited they are not producing mature cells then the whole marrow appears empty with very few cells and these few cells will be just blasts which are non functioning most common causes are usually immune drugs drugs immune and viral infections can suppress the bone marrow many drugs so make a list of it's all there in the robins make a list of drugs and immune causes and viral infections hepatitis b is a very typical example unlike another marrow disorder that is stem cell cancer unlimited um, the neoplasia of the stem cells can give rise to myelodysplastic syndrome and leukemia that we will cover later so we are only covering aplasia or aplastic anemia because it affects all the cell lines the stem cells are not dividing you will find normocytic means rbcs will be normal normochromic normocytic but with pancytopenia decreased wbc decreased platelets as well now what are all the features clinically very simple decreased rbc gives us to anemia decreased wbc recurrent infections and decreased platelets bleeding okay so in case of aplastic anemia bleeding is usually more severe so that's all anemias of deficiencies so deficiency anemias nutritional deficiency iron deficiency the most common clinically next common is megaloblastic anemia and then comes anemia of chronic disorders lack of iron transfer and then lastly aplastic anemia okay so i have covered the four major iron deficiency megaloblastic and anemia of chronic disease and aplastic anemia other anemias hemolytic anemias we will cover next okay good luck thank you